James, good morning. I trust that you are well. Good morning, indeed. It's a pleasure to be with you on this, I hopefully, lovely Friday morning. Now, South Korea starts moving frozen Iranian funds to a Qatari bank in preparation for a U.S.-Iranian prisoner swap. What's the story there, James? Indeed. Uh, so what we're seeing is uh, uh, discreet talks between the Iranians and the Americans, uh, primarily at this moment on a uh, prisoner swap, with other words, the release of Americans uh, or dual nationals being held in is, uh, Iranian prisons and Iranians uh, incarcerated in the United States. And alongside that is an effort to somehow dial down the tensions. Uh, the Americans and the Iranians appear to be very close to a prisoner swap. Uh, in which at least four Americans would be released by Iran. And in exchange for that, the United States not only agrees to um, release Iranian nationals, but also to allow uh, South Korea, which has about $7 billion in frozen um, Iranian funds, to release those funds. The way those funds are supposed to be released is through a Guthrie bank, and what we've seen is that the first $2 billion of those $7 billion appear to have been transferred from South Korea to Qatar. And at the same time, we're seeing um, uh, other signs of, um, of dialing down of tensions, including the Iranians slowing down on their uranium enrichment program. Now, the UAE establishes a gaming regulatory in a move to legalize gambling. Indeed. Um, I don't need to tell you that um, uh, Sharia is seen to be banning gambling. Uh, the UAE, in the, the latest move, uh, to project itself as a socially liberal society, uh, has established a gaming authority. The UAE uh, authorities seem to think that just shy of $7 billion in revenues can be gained from uh, 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 the legalization of gaming. And the expectation is that as part of its bid to uh, encourage tourism, and the UAE is very successful in tourism, as well as attract all kinds of people to invest, uh, having a casino may be uh, an advantage. Western nations prepare the UAE to halt, sh- halt shipments to, to Russia of dual-use goods. Indeed. So the UAE has uh, emerged as one of the uh, most important or very important allies of Russia. Uh, Huge numbers of Russians have set up uh, homes and businesses in the UAE. Um, The Wagner Group was uh, running a lot of its money through UAE banks. Uh, But increasingly, there's a concern that uh, the UAE as a transshipment hub is allowing uh, goods that are dual use, with other words, can be used for both military and civilian uh, purposes, that those goods are um, uh, are flowing freely from the UAE into Russia. And so you now have a delegation of U.S., British, and uh, European Union officials uh, preparing to travel to the UAE to, if you wish, uh, put the pressure on to be more controlling of what goes to Russia. And then Middle Eastern autocrats fear a new wave of regional protests. You've had uh, two waves of protests in the 2010s, if you wish. You had the 2011 protests that overthrew uh, the the leaders of Egypt, Tunisia, Libya, and Yemen. And that uh, decade was bookended by revolt in 2019, 2020, that uh, toppled the leaders of Algeria, Sudan, Lebanon, and Iraq. Uh, And then you got COVID, and everything stopped. 
what we're now seeing is the beginnings of what may be a new wave of protest. You've got the protests in Dara in Syria, uh, in which uh, the fall of uh, Bashar al-Assad uh, is being demanded. You had the last year of protests in Iran as a um, result of the death of a young woman in the custody of the religious police. Uh, you just had uh, protests in Libya following the uh, meeting between an Israeli, the, the Israeli foreign minister and the Libyan foreign minister. Uh, and so there's uh, a fear among um, the Gulf, uh, uh, those states that uh, uh, autocratic states that are opposed to these revolts. There's a fear that we could be looking at a third wave, and that may explain why we're seeing in various countries increased repression in a bid to uh, stymie that in the key, if you wish. All right, James, thanks for your time. Always appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. That was this week's Middle East Report with uh, James Dorsey. You can check out uh, his articles on his website, jamesmdorsey.net. Also subscribe for his newsletter to get regular updates on the region. Yeah, we weekly have this discussion with uh, James just to get an update on what's happening in the Middle East.